طريق رحمة وبركاته. Today, inshallah, we're going to solve uh, one of the IP uh, past uh, paper exam. And this question uh, is on the fraction and resolution of light. So here we have uh, monochromatic light uh, incident on one slit, and we will have a diffraction pattern here. A sketch for the diffraction pattern produce the graph showing the variation of the relative intensity versus angle. So, since here we have a single slit, so we'll have uh, central maximum here. And the first maximum and other other small maximum here, minimum and then maximum other small maximum. OK, B. The single narrow slit is replaced by double slit now. Explain with reference to your answer to A how Re, um, really criterion applies to the diffraction patterns produced by the light emerging from the two slits. Just refresh our memory, your memory a little bit about resolution. Now, if you have two different lights, like two stars, for example, and I'm watching, uh, uh, I'm observing these stars uh, from a telescope. So, Will resolved here. I cannot distinguish that there are two. Here there will resolved. Will resolved. It means I can distinguish that I have two sources of light. Here it's just resolved. Now what is the difference between uh, them? Here I have just resolved. Just resolved when. The central maximum. Okay. In the central maximum of the first source coincide with the first minimum. So here is central maximum of one of the source coincide with the first minimum of the other source. They're just resolved. I can barely distinguish that. I have two different source of light. Will resolved, will resolved, I can see clearly that I have two different source of light when the central maximum of one source coincide with the first maximum of the other source. Not resolved, all of them are coincide on each other, like in maximum and the other maximum or part of the maximum coincide on top of each other. So I can see them as one source. Now just resolved theta A, theta A equals to theta D. Here theta A will resolve is greater than theta D. Not resolved is theta A less than theta D. Now, what is the difference between theta A and theta D? Theta A is the angle of separation between these two objects. So if I have two stars, the distance between them is S, and here is the observer, it's me. I'm watching these stars by my own eye or by, teles by a telescope. So distance between the observer and these two stars is small d. This theta, if I take tan, tan, the angle is opposite over adjacent. So it will be S over D. The distance between these stars, two stars divided by the distance between the observer and the star. So theta A is the angle of separation. Now, what is theta D? Theta D is the angle of the first diffraction minimum the angle of the first diffraction minimum. So here we said just resolved when the uh, central maximum of one of the source coincide with the first minimum. So 
this is the angle of the first minimum. This is theta d. <clears throat> OK, so just resolved. If the central maximum. Of one of the source coincide with the first minimum of the other source, I can distinguish that I have two source of light. I can distinguish them. Let's go back to the question. Now see. Two lamps emit light of a wavelength 620 nanometer. So this is lambda. The light is observed through a circular aperture. The diameter is 1.2 millimeter. OK. And at distance, Eight point eight hundred and fifty meter. Okay. Now, so I have. What calculate the minimum distance between the lamps so that they are resolved? So here I have two sources of light. I need to find the distance between them. S. Here is the observer, it's me or the observer. I'm, I'm observing them. The distance uh, D is 850 meter. So we said just resolved is if theta D equals to theta A. Theta D is the angle of uh, first diffraction minimum, this equals 1.22 lambda for circular aperture divided by D, and this will equal S divided by D. I'll just substitute. I need S. Okay, so rearrange this equation. So S will equal 1.22 times lambda times D divided by B. Now, what is B? B is the diameter of the aperture, which is 1.5 millimeter. So 1.22, just substitute, times 620 nanometer, 10 to the power negative 9, divided by 850 divided by 1.5 times 10 to the power negative 3, and this will give us 0.43 meter. OK, second question is on standing waves. So here you have a diagram that shows an arrangement used to produce standing or stationary waves on a stretch string that has a length of 2.4. So L is 2.4 meter standing wave of five loops. So N, I have five, five loops, which means I have five anti-node nodes appear when the frequency of the oscillator. So I have F is 150 Hertz. Now state the name given to point. This point, so this point is node. Here I have here anti node, node, anti node, nodes, etc. Okay. Calculate the speed along the way, the speed of the wave along the string. Now, when we have a string on uh, uh, a wave that has uh, been formed uh, on a string. The first harmonic, L, it's half lambda, because if I connect, I, I just continue this one. Okay. This is will be complete lambda, so this is half lambda. If you do cross multiplication, so lambda will be 2L divided by, by N. 
So I have to find lambda first, which is 2L divided by N, 2 times L is 2.4 divided by 5, and this will give us 0.96 meter. I need the velocity is lambda times F, so lambda 0.96 times the frequency 150, and this equals 144 meter per second. This is the first section. Second section, calculate the frequency of the oscillator that would produce standing wave. OK. So the frequency, let's do it here. Frequency is velocity over lambda. So V divided by 2L, and we put N on the top. N, I have 5, the fifth harmonic, so 5 times 144 divided by 2 times 2.4, and this will give us 60 hertz. 